Welcome to Dev's Talk Live, presented by Mancini Sleep World. I got NBA champion and handshake extraordinaire. Let's go. Uh, 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 uh. Hey! Festus Azili <laughs> is joining us on Dev's Talk Live. I'm Zena Keda. I'm trying so hard to stay awake after that diva of a shot clock in LA tried to lull us to sleep. It makes sense that we're presented by Mancini Sleep World. But Festus, after exchanging a bunch of buckets and then letting the shot clock be the diva it wanted to be. Mm -hmm. The Warriors decided to take their win on the road, 128-121 over the Lakers. But tell me, in your playing days, having delays like this, how frustrating must it be, especially with a game that was going back and forth? I mean, the face right here of Ben Affleck tells it all. <laughs> and Steve Kerr. Even the fans <laughs> were tired. You can't imagine what happens when, when you have such a long delay. Mm. The guys get cold. You're warm, you're running through the game, and you lose your rhythm. I was worried about the shooters, but I guess it doesn't matter for a guy like LeBron James. He's still bullying his way to the rim at the end of the game right there. I definitely thought he was going to get a tech when he got that bounce, the bounce? That bounce of the yeah, ball. Yeah, the hard bounce. I, I, was pretty, I was pretty surprised. So here we go. Rob Perez, the final two minutes of the Lakers-Warriors took exactly 23 minutes and 27 seconds of real time to complete. The closest I could think of in terms of experience, I'm just waiting for this game to resume. <laughs> yes, this was literally all of us in the studio, and I'm sure it was all of I've you never seen that at home, too. Well, here's the thing. I remember last season at the Warriors-Mavs game at American Airlines Arena, there was heavy rainfall in Dallas and rain delay. There were drops of rain inside the arena dropping on the Warriors bench. It took another 20 minutes. Late. It seems like the Warriors are always at the center of these things. I'm not sure what's going on. You remember the you remember the clip from the San Antonio Spurs like back in the day mm. in the dome when there was water? Yes, was yes, yes, yes. At yes. least it wasn't that. It wasn't that. It was just a few towels on the floor. But it does seem like it's always matchups with the Warriors that seem to have some issues. But I'll tell you what, the matchups between the Warriors and the Lakers always seem to be popcorn type of games, Ooh. particularly with Steph and LeBron. What is it about the way that they match up against each other? It's like the Titans going up against each other. Well, I call this the modern day Magic Johnson versus Larry Bird. Mm, and as you that. see, the points, the assists, the rebounds, these are the, the league's best. Yeah. Top 75, but both guys are both top 10 all time in my book. Steph Curry, one of the best shot makers in the history of the game. Mm -hmm. And LeBron James, just one of the best playmakers, best players in the history of the game. Arguably one of the, uh, arguably the best player in the history of basketball. Yep. So, you know, when you have these guys still playing at this level, Steph year 15, LeBron year 21, with 40 points tonight. Are you kidding me? Actually, it was supposed to be, it could have been 43, but his foot was on the line at the end of the game. Right, that's true. Uh, they had to take that it's back. Just, it's really incredible to see these guys. And really why, why it's so incredible is because of all the time that they put in yeah. with their bodies. I was a teammate of Steph's. I saw how much time he put in with his recovery because now as you're getting older, the recovery gets harder. So yeah. you have to put even more time in. And I know a guy like that, as meticulous as Steph is, he's really, really putting that time in and showing in this game. Well, I want to ask you about that right after this. Steph Curry's at the podium. We definitely have to hear what he has to say about this game. Oh, last, yesterday, he mentioned how urgent things are, how big a game this is. And Draymond said maybe sometimes you don't want to hear that. It doesn't help, but maybe this time was the perfect you know, you know, time to hear that. What, what did you think when he said that? Did, were you thinking the same? And how big did this game become then? You didn't have to tell me anything. I missed the last three, so I was excited just to be back. Um, but you obviously understand the ramifications of every game we play down the stretch. Uh, I know the guys fought hard in Dallas and, you know, lost it late, so you want to have a nice bounce back performance. But <clears throat> every game, especially against teams that are you know, right in the, <clears throat> excuse me, right in the uh, the standings. You know, where it's all jumbled up in that plan. Like every game matters. So, uh, and I knew we haven't won here in a while. Um, I think it's been like two years ago. So that was on top of mind too. Uh, yeah. How uh, was the ankle? Was there ever a moment when you had to think about it out there? No. Nah, uh, it was as expected. Like. Body felt good, loosened up as we went, and it was nice to just get my reps back and feel the the competition again. Even though it was just, you know what nine ten days, uh, I did miss it for sure. You mentioned you know you haven't won here in a while. Just big picture uh, team you might see again in the play and potentially what kind of confidence can you guys draw from as a group uh, winning here in the fashion that you did? I know AD missed the the second half, but um, 
you understand what they've been, you know, playing well as well. And you understand what they do, putting pressure on you in the paint. You know, if we try to keep the offensive side of the ball simple and not turn it over, then we give ourselves a great chance to defend them in, in the half court. You know, Braun's going to get his. When AD was out there, he's going to get his. You try not to let him get too many uh, open looks from three. And when we, when we got stops, we were able to run too. JK got open a couple of times in transition. Wiggs did as well. Uh, so for us to push the pace off of stops is always big against a, a bigger team like that. And uh, only 18 free throws. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you, do you um, notice the trend? Dollars not paying Paul as much points going down. You would think maybe the Warriors wouldn't love that, but in a different way, is this kind of playing to you some of the guys' strengths? Where, as, as as someone said, you will never try to sell a call. Um, does this help you, maybe, you guys? I just feel as long as it's consistent either way, whatever the tone of the game is, um, that helps everybody out there just play a good brand of basketball. Um, less complaining, just just go hoop. And when it becomes like one side or the other and you kind of feel it, that's where things kind of get a little wacky and you get distracted by it. So for us, it just makes it about the game. And, you know, playing sound defense, obviously, you know, if they're allowed you be physical, you can use your hands a little bit, um, knowing that they're going to do it on the other side, but it does help you, you know, just stay in front of guys and, um, you know, play solid team defense. So the consistency is is key uh, when it comes to that. Last, last two how would you describe how, how strange that was? It was weird because every time, I don't know why uh, we, we we had the hope that we did after maybe the second one, but every time they put the ball in, we're like, all right, we're good. And then two dribbles and the whistles came back. So i never seen anything like that in my 15 years. Because uh, usually there's like a backup plan of a secondary clock or something. So uh, thankfully, there's only what a minute and some change, minute 50 left. And once they did get the ball back and play, you know, two possessions, and we kind of sealed the deal from there. But definitely weird. Uh, I, I watch a lot of golf. I don't know if they did like that playing through uh, thing where you see the commercials running and they're just waiting for the game to come back. But it's, Probably not the greatest for TV. Stuff on that in regard. Well, Stephen Curry was our ultimate performer of the game, presented by BMW. Had 31 points, four of five from the free throw line, six rebounds, five assists, two steals, and also ended with 12 of 24 from the paint. It seemed like he switched a gear. Festus, you played with him. What does it look like for him to have 13 points in the first half and then go to 31? How can you tell when he's entered a new gear in his game? Well, I think Steph was going to have a big game tonight regardless because it was his first game back. Mm -hmm. We've seen that happen time and time again. We could go all the way back to the 2022 finals or 2022 playoffs where Steph Curry came back for the first time against the Denver That's Nuggets right. yep. coming off the bench and really went crazy. Last year, you could see him in a big game against the Sacramento Kings, and you know, when it's a big game, plus the fact that he was back for the first time after the Warriors have lost a couple games in a row, I, I think Steph had it in his mind that he was going to come out and do whatever needed to be done to get a win. He had Draymond Green hit him on the back cut for his first bucket in the game. And after that, the floodgates opened. Yep. Steph Curry does that to an offense. And you know you're missing 27 points a night. But tonight he decided, you know, to give you a few extra points tonight just for, just for good measure. <laughs> good for good measure is exactly right. And I'm happy you brought up Draymond Green because he's someone we're going to talk about as well in this show just the big three showing off. Mm -hmm. But before we get to Draymond, we got to talk about Klay Thompson. Ooh. Because in the first half, the buckets were being exchanged. Mm -hmm. The Warriors could not get a stop, but they were able to rely on the scoring phenom and three-point immaculate shooting from Klay Thompson. He had 21 in the first half. Pretty quiet second half, right but there. it was exactly what they needed. Tell me a little bit about why Klay Thompson coming off the bench, st starting whatever he does, why it's so important that he has a big game for the Warriors. Well, when you have a guy like Klay Thompson, who is one of the best shot makers in the league coming off your bench, you really have like, it's like a second win for your team. Because now you have this first wave of scores mm. where you're trying to defend against Steph Curry. 
Then you have the second wave with Chris Paul and Klay Thompson. Wow. Now with TJD coming to his own, that second unit is really lethal. Klay Thompson, that was probably the best the best kind of movement I've seen yeah, him do in, 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 in this whole season so far. So I love these things. Okay. I love seeing Clay Thompson be so aggressive. I'm so excited to see that. You see me, I'm stumbling my words because well, Clay is my guy. Yep. I know what he's been through to get to this point. Mm. I know how much people have been on him all season long. I know how much he wants to win. And so these are the things that get me excited when I see a guy like that, all the hard work he puts in, no matter what. With Reyna Shine, he's in the gym and he's working on his shot. And a guy like that, when you see him, when they see that hard work pay off, it, it just makes you excited yeah. because good guys win. And I'm excited to see that part. Clearly, we all are. I mean, everyone <laughs> has been watching Clay Thompson get his season going, That's right. right? Especially in the beginning of the year, not being able to get his shot off. Mm -hmm. But one person that has really helped in that offensive movement that you were just talking about with what Clay Thompson does, Draymond Green. He mm -hmm. also came back from an injury. He's been dealing with some lower back issues, but as he said, he trusts his medical staff that were able to get him on the floor tonight. And he, he almost got a triple double, but did what he had to do in terms of the rebounding and the assist, 12 and 13. What? in the world these lobs with jk great pass what this connection with jk uh -huh. jk talked about this on the pod what is it like to have a vet like draymond telling you you can do this you're unstoppable and then setting you up that way i mean draymond understands his role for guys like jk for pajemski for guys like tjd yeah. His role is to be the guy, be the voice that these guys can listen to, especially in a season like this that's been a roller coaster, a little bit of a roller coaster season. They're trying to get their bearings, understanding that there's not going to be a lot of these seasons left. So while Steph, Clay, and Draymond are healthy and they're here, and this is still part of the, those, those last few years, yeah. they're trying to take advantage of this time. And you need guys like TJD, like Paz, like TJD, you need you need TJD. Did I say it twice? Yeah, yeah. TJD, you definitely need a TJD. JK. <laughs> <laughs> you need a big fella. But you know what I love about what Draymond is doing? I've gotten a lot of those lobs too from Draymond. He does a great job of complimenting Steph Curry because Steph is always going to have that force, that gravity. He's going to pull two defenders every time he set a, a ball screen for Steph Curry. Nobody wants to leave him open because when he hits a three, it doesn't feel like a three. It actually feels like six points because of the way the crowd gets into <laughs> right, the game right, or right. the crowd gets shut up on the other team. So this is what you don't ever want Steph to get off. So every time he comes off a ball screen, you have two defenders. Draymond Green comes off, makes such great passes, accurate passes. And now I see him running the ball every time because he understands that this Warriors team, they play small. And if you're going to play small, one thing you have to do is play fast because that's your advantage. So the fast break points, nine to eight tonight, but still they were getting stops and running. And he had, what, 13 of the, of the 38 assists. That's what gets this offense going. And I love the fact that he has such a great chemistry with JK right now. That young guy is gonna be really special. Or he already is. For sure. What a turnaround. Last game, 19 assists to 38 this game. Well, we'll also talk about a turnaround in Fitz on the other side of this break. Mm. Fezzy Fells, Fitz, we haven't done that in a oh, while. Oh, yeah. Let's Look at go. this above the rim. Him, baby. Air condo! Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Dubs Talk Live is presented by Mancini Sleep World. Visit us during our spring clearance sale. Save big on premium mattresses plus free delivery. Hurry in now or visit us online at sleepworld.com. Hello, YouTube. YouTube, what's going on? YouTube, we switched it up with Fezzy Fell. Do we, do, does, does YouTube get to see our handshake too? Did they see it earlier? Yeah, they saw it earlier. Oh, if they're okay. watching the game, I mean the show. All right. All right, let's see what YouTube's talking about. We got our crew in this. I just love that we have a little family in here. Uh, kept that ball moving and the turnovers low. Yes, please. Arjun mentioning that. Amen. Only seven turnovers? Vince T. Yes. Like that. And not only only seven turnovers, seven points allowed off those turnovers. Okay. Huge. Transition defense has been a thing. But if you are shooting over 50%, you definitely don't want to turn the ball over because you're <laughs> really true. giving away the easy points that you're going to get. That's true. That's true. Uh, Vince, Vince T, Draymond's passing was elite tonight. You call that out. Uh, Kaminga played good, good well. He got to make them pay for leaving him open. Rebel the sounds, amen. It can pay. Pay up. Um... Let's see, what That's else have we seen? Huh? Oh, would, yeah. Would look on YouTube in between. Okay. okay. Now, Leslie Fell. Oh, I got a Fell. shout out. That's what I'm talking about. Thank with you. The great, thank you. The great pride of Yale. Look. Vince T. 
<laughs> you got a point. He's talking about billion dollar league shot clock problems. <laughs> I mean, everything can't be perfect, y'all. Don't be spoiled, okay? It's Stuff real. happens it's from real. time to time. That was crazy, though. I've never seen that before. Clay got us going, and Steph finished it off. No, I, I agree. True. I agree. Cause, Splash Brothers. This you is, know, don't forget now. Don't. That's the reason why they are the Splash Brothers. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Festus doesn't get a laptop, though. <laughs> Chico, you're so silly. It's, that, I don't um, get a laptop because I'm a sub to the <laughs> Exactly. I, he I doesn't get, need a laptop, if y'all, D if y'all says. If you make Festus me a, a, need a more laptop. permanent fixture, then yes, I can get a laptop. Otis Bird the third, pretty dope to see the lobs. They were beautiful. I, I love those. They were beautiful. Go get them, the JK. That's what you want to do. Welcome back to Dubs Talk Live, presented by Mancini Sleep World. On Monday, oops, there goes my face, along with six other wonderful ladies that will be taking part of the Women's Empowerment Broadcast, 6 p.m. on Monday. You don't want to miss this. LaChina Robinson, Jenny Kavnar will be on Play by Play by Color, and then I'll be analyzing alongside KB, Laura Britt, and Jane Appel Marinelli. And then after the game, we got Kyla Mills and myself, Talk. I mean, I'm so pumped. I cannot I can't wait. wait. I'm off that day, but I'm coming to watch you later. Hey, I love it. Bonte's bringing his mom by. Yes. I'm so, I mean, like, it's just going to be just love in the building. Definitely tune in on Monday. Now, before we get back into this game, we got Festus in the building. We got to switch it up a little bit. There's something we haven't done in a while. Wow. And that's been, I, I've been trying to look good for myself. Oh, you guys are going to surprise me. Fezzy fell. It's time for... Fezzy's fits. Fezzy Fells fits? Yes. That's right now? Yes. You want me to go over to the Please. board? Please. What y'all want me to Please. do today, Please, show it. Please. What y'all got for me? We got to look right. at these arrival fits and let us know from the Fezzy Fell. What's he thinking about these fits? Outfits. Okay. All right. So the whole point <laughs> of this segment is the fact that what you wear, how you, you look good, you play good. You play good, they pay good. So <laughs> let's see it. what they got for me. Are y'all showing it right here? Because they surprised me. You have to remember they surprised me. Oh, dude, I love, I love accessories. If you know anything about me, I usually don't wear jewelry, but that right there, Steph Curry had the killer mode today. Mm -hmm. He was coming in, letting y'all know. Okay. Oh, GP2. With the jacket and the jeans? What you think? What With you the think distressed jeans? jeans, I like this. It's a good fitting jacket, and I love that collar as well. That's a, this is it's a, a good blue view. collar, but blue collar swaggy outfit right here by For GP2. Sure. You know it fits his, his personality on the court. A guy that defends, he runs the floor, <laughs> there you he gets go. block shots, everything. This is this is the fit right here for GP2. He did exactly what he was supposed to. He understood the assignment. I agree. I assignment. agree. What else you got for me? Come on, baby! You got Ron <laughs> Adams. You are excited I have to see this. Ron is my coach. Coach, he was my coach when I played. Yo, the OG Ron Adams is the defensive coach for the Warriors. Look at all the swag. If your coach is coming in like this, how are you going to lose? What, how are you going to lose? I don't know. All right, talk to Looking me. Looking good. Kevon Looney, the vet of the team. You know, obviously, he's going to rep his alma mater, UCLA. March Madness around the corner the makes sweater. sense. Is that a cardigan? Yeah. You know, a little cardigan fit. Oh, we're still going. Oh. <laughs> the king. Well... You know, he's How always you pushing How the you feel? I actually don't mind. I actually really like this fit. I think he might have forgot, though. I think he's, he's not in Miami no more, man. Hey, this I was going to say. This I was going to say, warm yet in it's LA? From, it's from Miami. I, these days, it's a little cold out here in California. So I don't know oh, if that's no. the proper, appropriate fit for it. But it's LeBron James. Listen, he was just a little move. he was a little excited for spring uh, being around the corner. It's yeah. been sunny around here in the north, northern California. But I don't know what's going on in so like southern I said, California. You look good. You play good. You play good. They pay good. And obviously, you see everybody out, you know, everybody in there kind of did their job. Okay. You know, so I love that. I love Fezzy that. Fezzy Fells Fitz is back. You know what I love more? And you'll also love this points in the paint, baby. Okay. All right. Now, before Anthony Davis went out with a eye injury, I'm not sure if you guys saw that, his eye immediately sw swelled up in the first quarter. Four points in that first quarter in the paint. After he went out, and for the rest of the game, 58 points in the paint by the Warriors. It makes you question, and it is a legitimate question, if the Warriors have to face off against a team with size, like an Anthony Davis, will they be able to be successful? 
I'd like to ask you. Well, don't forget that even with Anthony Davis in the game, Brandon Pajemski was still getting offensive rebounds. That's one thing that's really important to note. Uh, another way that they get points in the paint. But the Warriors are a three-point shooting team. Mm. The thing that really opens that up is the fact that Draymond can make all these incredible plays, the backup plays, the post splits, which is where he gets it on the block, and he's able to make plays when guards cut, uh, cut to the rim. So these are things that are going to be open regardless of if Anthony Davis is in the game or not in the game. That first quarter that you talk about, the Warriors actually scored the ball pretty well. Mm -hmm. And they, 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 shot, they still shot over 50%. They, 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 hit thir they had 30 points in the first quarter. Yep, 30 and to 36. Jonathan Kaminga hit some threes. Andrew Wigan hit some threes. So this is something to note because as the flow of the game goes, that's the way the offense is going to go. Anthony Davis, his injury is obviously going to affect the way that they attack the paint. But I thought Steph Curry did an incredible job of taking advantage of that. He was 9 for 14 from the two-point line, 3 for 10 from three. A guy who, obviously, his threat from the three-point line is what the, everybody expects. They, yep. they always think about that. You game plan for that. But he attacked the, the, the paint, shot fake, got into the paint, and was able to create uh, plays from that. And speaking of that first quarter, you did appreciate the fact that Jonathan Kaminga found a little bit of his mid-range game. Mm. You saw him going off of screens, finding his way into the middle of the paint at that free throw line and being able to shoot it. How I've been seeing this a lot where Brandon Pajemski is getting a first step, Mo Moses Moody is getting a first step, Jonathan Kaminga is getting a first step. How important is the mid-range game for the Warriors to be able to develop? Man, you've seen everything from Jonathan Kaminga right now. Mm. You saw the three, the three ball, he was two for three from three. Yeah. Now you see the mid-range where he's able to pull up. Those are really important because you're not always going to be able to get to the paint. Right. When you have Anthony Davis in there, it's important to have a guy that can pull up. Draymond Green, when he sets screens, sometimes he might have to pull up a couple times because the sure. paint is clogged. When he doesn't have the pass or the lob, the paint is clogged. People are sitting back there. You just pull up, whether it's a floater or a jumper. Those are things that you see in Jonathan Kaminga's game. I wonder if, you know, being a guy like, around a guy like Chris Paul, whose mid-range game is so automatic, if that rubs off on him too. Because that's a guy that shows you it is possible to make those over and over and over. It's a layup for Chris Paul. Now. Jonathan Kaminga can score the ball without a problem, but one of the beautiful things about his game has been his evolution into a playmaker. Mm -hmm. Especially in that first half, you saw him make some incredibly smart Ooh. passes. Look at this outside kick to Andrew Wiggins. Splash easy. What do you love most about this growth in Jonathan Kaminga's game to be able to see his teammates? Well, for one, I love the fact that JK is playing. So that, <laughs> for one, go. is really important. But you see, he is... It's kind of like watching a young superhero, mm -hmm. right? Discovering his powers. Ooh, I like that. has all the athletic abilities of, of what I consider, like, just a, an incredible basketball player. He's able to get by defenders. He has mm -hmm. the speed, the ability to jump. And those are things that this Warriors team definitely needs because they, they are a jump shooting team without him and Andrew Wiggins. Right. So with a guy like that, you're able to increase your athleticism. You're able to guard defenders. But offensively, he can get by guys at will. Yeah. I don't think at this point now he beats every miss every matchup that he that he has against him. He's you expect him to have 20 points every night. Yeah. And with <laughs> that, now you're getting into the scouting report. When you drive, the defense comes. Then you get to the next play, the next uh, layer of your game, which is making plays for other people, making other people better. Mm -hmm. And I watch him just continue to get better and better the more you have him on the floor. JK is a special player, and he shows you that every night now. I agree with you. I think it is an anomaly if he's not scoring 20 points mm -hmm. a game, if he's not scoring 40% from the floor. Ended up tonight, 23 points, 3 of 5 from the free throw line, 2 of 3 from 3, 9 of 16 from the mm -hmm. floor. But here's the thing we were just talking about, four assists. That is huge. All right, when we come back, we got to talk about what the Warriors are going to do now that they are tied. Go get it, Warriors! For the ninth seed. There's a lot of games ahead, but not a lot. Don't go anywhere. It's Dubs Talk Live, presented by Mancini Sleep World. All right, Chico is reminiscing. Our team used to be so big. You with Bogut too. and Festus, LOL. Oh, they, oh, they give us a shout out? They're giving you guys a shout wow. out. Wow. And also, Vintage. Bree Banks, we will not have time to talk about this today, but yes, shout out to TJD because JK, P B Pods, AirPods, uh, TJD, all came alive a little bit in that second half, particularly for the Warriors. When you have your, your I want to call them babies. Like bench squad! When you have your bench squad yeah. and your younger <laughs> players coming up right then in a moment where it's clear that the Warriors need to extend the lead, mm -hmm. get, gain a little space, how great is that it's coming from your bench, that production? 
I mean, the Warriors bench have been, they've been consistent all year long. Yeah. They're the third scoring bench in the NBA. And with okay. adding Klay Thompson to it, they're only going to get better. I mean, you have guys that, that come in, they play extremely hard. Yep. Then you have a big man in TJD that's blocking shots. He's coming along every game. You see him rebounding. He's finishing over other bigs, so it gives you a different dimension to play. I, I love the versatility that they, that they play at. Yep. And then you have Chris Paul, who... He's not just, they call him the point guard for a reason mm. because he can play different styles. We always thought that he was going to slow the offense down. That's it. Hey, he's we, give Chris Paul his flowers. His flowers, his credit. Yeah. He can speed the game up. He can play slow. He can play in the half court. I'm excited to see him in the playoffs with this team. So just got to keep winning out and, and get out there. Yeah. I want to ask you because I've, I've seen this um, mentioned here, but mm -hmm. the Warriors against big defensive bigs. Mm -hmm. You think about Daniel Gafford, you think about Anthony Davis, what do they do? Come out here to this deep water, big fellas. Bring the big fellas out, <laughs> okay. put them in a pick and roll. They're going to okay. be in the drop, lot, drop coverage, and okay. Steph Curry, dance on them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Easy answer. <laughs>
Your job is to play your game and to play the best you can. Yeah. And these last remaining 15 games are, for, are just there for the Warriors to tighten up their defensive rotations, get the chemistry together offensively. Now you have the full squad healthy, knock on wood. Right, we got it. Knock on wood, <laughs> got everyone healthy. Now they just yeah. got to keep getting better defensively, offensively. You know they play small ball. So how can they get that small ball uh, lineup, small ball offense as sharp as it can be? Okay. All righty. And Come on, YouTube. Do you have the same energy as Steve Kerr? Do I? You know, Steve I got, Kerr just keeps saying, I, got energy. I feel like we're going to keep stringing wins along together and everything's going to be I got energy. That's it. That's, let's just go play. I like That's that. it. Let's, I, like I, I that. don't really know what you expect me to say because as you go down towards the end of the year, this is where the best teams come out to play. I had this weird feeling the other day where I was thinking, yeah. There's just a few more weeks left in the regular season, and then it's the playoffs. Then the basketball season will be over. You got to cherish every one of these moments. And as a team like the Warriors, like I don't know how many more years we have left of Steph, Clay, Draymond. So, so when you hear Steph saying things like, "Man, like, I have to cherish these moments," it's because of that feeling. Like, you just got to enjoy every day that you have these guys and you have these greatness, uh, this greatness to watch every. Agreed. All right, before we go out, I just saw a question about where the Warriors are ranked. So right now, they are tied for ninth on the standings with the Lakers. But their win percentage is higher than the Lakers. So if we were to end the season right now and go to play-ins, the Warriors would technically be the ninth seed. The, the Lakers would technically be the tenth seed, and that's how it would play out. Mm -hmm. So it's by percentage points in terms of different differentiation, but only ninth seed. So right now, the goal is just win. Just win, just win, just win. All right, folks, we're going to get out of here. It's Saturday night. All we do is win. Okay. Well, I don't know if we'll sing all that. But okay, good night, everyone. Thanks for joining us. All right, y'all. <laughs>